She was greeted by Chinese dignitaries as well as members of the Chinese film industry. She was entertained by the Star Film Company and artists like Butterfly Wu, China's premier actress and Anna's Chinese counterpart. It was not complete admiration, however. During her meetings with the press, she was often asked why she would choose to play roles that reflected the Chinese in a negative light. She answered directly that she had very little control over the parts offered by the studios. She could only take the film jobs that were offered her. Till the four, Anna continued her tour through Shanghai, Suchao, Beijing, and her father's wing on village near Canton. Anna had the insight to ask China's famed newsreel Wong to film her journey throughout China. She also wrote a journal of her travels that was printed in the Los Angeles Times, New York Times, and numerous other newspaper publications. She finally experienced the history and tradition that she had only heard about and headed back to the U.S. with a head and heart full of stories of her people. In March of 1937, Anna experienced the dark side of fame. Anna and the family of David O. Selznick each received extortion letters that threatened both them and their families. The culprit, Dr. Alan Foote, threatened to physically harm them if they did not pay him $20,000. Newspapers sensationalized the shocking event. Luckily, the authorities caught him before any harm came to either of their families. Eventually, the man was declared insane and committed to a mental institution. Her first project after returning from China was Paramount's Daughter of Shanghai, directed by Robert Florey, opposite her childhood friend, Korean-American actor Philip Ang. Stop and look. It's a well-dressed young lady when she goes a-calling. I want to see the boss. She's not in my department, honey. You better see Olga. Olga? What do you want with Hartman? A job. She don't need anyone. He told me so. Don't believe her. She tells that to all the girls. The music in this dump won't go around for seven of us. Hartman's out anyway. You'll find Hartman down the hall. Good luck, kid. Thanks. With the film's financial success, Paramount re-signed Anna to another three-picture deal. Movie audiences loved its Chinese-American star. Then, world events intruded. In August of 1937, Anna received news that Japan had invaded Shanghai. Her youngest sister Mary was still living there. After much uncertainty, she learned that Mary had barely escaped Shanghai just as the Japanese were attacking the city. Anna tried to put her fears aside and continued to work, but the worsening situation in China preoccupied her. She had been working desperately to get her father and the rest of her family out of China, fighting technicalities in the Chinese Exclusion Act. Finally, by 1938, Anna was able to get her entire family back in the U.S. Now with her family together again, Anna was able to use her fame to draw attention to the China War relief, working with various Chinatown communities. Now I see a very charming, lovely lady sitting here. I think it's Anna Mae Wong, the motion picture actress. Anna Mae, would you mind telling me what you think of this uh, occasion? What does it mean to you and your people? Well, it means a better opportunity for my people to show America, the adopted country, which China can offer to America by way of culture, philosophy, high ideals, and the arts. The new 
center where eventually there will be room to show the, the really beautiful faces of Chinese civilization. Ellie Chinatown even asked Anna to serve as a grand marshal in the Chinatown Moon Festival Parade. The community recognized the prominence of Anna's status outside Chinatown and the attraction that she would draw for Chinese causes both here and abroad. Anna fulfilled her three-picture deal with Paramount, including the loan out to Warner Brothers for When Were You Born? and Paramount's own King of Chinatown, an island of lost men. Although these were considered B-movies or low-budget movies, they made money for the studio and received positive reviews. In 1939, Anna's stage show toured with highlights from Hollywood throughout Australia to raise awareness and funds for the China war relief effort. Thank you so much, Dr. Bao and Madam Bao. You've extended me a most warm welcome, and I thank you very much. To the many Chinese who are listening in, may I say, One of the poignant moments in Anna Mae Wong's life was the suicidal death of Mary, Anna's younger sister at the tender age of 26. Mary was unable to deal with the harsh realities of being a Chinese woman in America, trying to establish her own independence. Just like her brother, James, Mary turned to Shanghai, China to pave her way before the war broke out, away from under the shadows of her famous sister, Anna. Work office dwindled, Anna was no longer contracted with any studio. She was cast in Columbia's Ellery Queen's Penthouse Mystery, which starred Ralph Bellamy and Margaret Lindsay. When the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor in 1941, Anna set her career aside to get even more involved with the Chinese war relief, raising money and publicizing the plight of the people in China. Anna and her other siblings did what they did on the home front. In addition, Anna entertained at the USO tour camps in Alaska and Canada, bringing a bit of home away from home to US and Allied troops during the war. Anna and her friend James Wong Hao broadcast on radio programs to boost morale and rally support for China. Our hostess is the brilliant and talented Anna May Wong. Kung Hei, thank you. And now among our distinguished guests this evening is one of America's leading motion picture cameramen, Mr. James Wong Hao. Thank you, Anna May Wong. You spoke for all of us when you said, your heart is with China on this occasion of the Spring Festival. During this period, Anna starred in two low-budget American PRC films. They were titled Lady from Chongqing and Bombs Over Burma. You cannot kill me. You cannot kill China. Not even a million deaths could crush the soul of China. For the soul of China is eternal. I die, a million will take my place, and nothing can stop them, neither hunger, nor torture, nor the fire squad. We shall live on until the enemy is driven back over scorched land and hurled into the sea. That time will come soon, for the armies of decency and liberty are on the march. China's destiny is victory will live because human freedom will not perish. Out of the ashes of ruin and old hatred, the force of peace will prevail until the world is again sane and good. These films reflected her support and sympathy for China. In 1943, Madame Chiang Kai-shek and her entourage came to the United States to plea for the plight of war-torn China with the invasion of the Japanese. 
Even though Anna Mae Wong had donated her time and energy to this cause years in advance, for some reason she was never recognized for her efforts and devotion by Madam Chiang Kai-shek nor her people. By the end of the war in 1945, Anna was 40 years old. 25 years had passed since she started her quest to become a Hollywood star. But even with her devotion, commitment to the craft, and patriotism, Hollywood never accepted an actress aging. In 1946, Anna began to experience a bout of health problems. She decided to take a well-deserved break. Now Anna wanted some time with her family. It had been six years since Anna was on the silver screen, but in 1949, when her friend director Arthur Lubin asked her to be in his film, Impact, she agreed. Her health problems were compounded by her father's passing. Though he lived to 91, Anna felt this loss deeply. Even though he initially objected to her career, he had become her biggest supporter. She retreated to Moongate, her Santa Monica home. Film office continued to dwindle. With the bitter aftertaste of World War II, the American public lost its appetite for Asian-themed movies. Anna would need to look elsewhere to practice her craft. With the introduction of television, Anna was given the opportunity to act in the small screen format. In 1951, 46-year-old Anna flew to New York to begin her own television series on the Dumont Television Network. She was nervous, and for one of the few times in her life, she was unsure if she could succeed. The gallery of Madame Lu Song lasted for only 13 episodes, but it offered Anna another medium in which to express herself. Once again, Hollywood beckoned. Producer Ross Hunter cast Anna in his drama 1960s Portrait in Black with Anthony Quinn and Lana Turner. It was to be her last performance. When Mr. Hunter asked Anna to perform in his next project, Flower Drum Song, Anna accepted. But she later bowed out of her commitment due to failing health. Her lifetime fight and struggle to be an actress finally took its toll. In December of 1960, Anna fell gravely ill and under care. On February 3rd, 1961, Anna Mae Wong died in her Santa Monica, California home of a heart attack caused by complications of cirrhosis of the liver. She was 56. Anna Mae Wong remains an international movie star icon. She was an Asian-American pioneer woman at a time when all was against her the system, Hollywood, and her people. She had a passion and dared to strive for a dream, to be an actress. Anna Mae Wong walked the path alone with great courage and luminous beauty. She led the way for Asian actors to follow and paid with her health, heartaches, and humiliation. She was and always will be the daughter of the dragon. The question is, was it worth it? When I was growing up, I was...